today I've travelled to Microplus in uh, Stourbridge. I'm with Adam Marshall. Um, I'm interested uh, in this story mainly because this SW20 machine from Star GB Micronics was delivered here uh, just a, a less than two years ago. I want to find out why he bought this machine and what I would say is I'd encourage you to stick around to listen to the, some of the benefits that this machine can offer. Adam, firstly, what was the reason that you, you purchased this SW20? Because you're a, a, a big star user, but this machine offered something a little bit different. Well, as you can see around the factory, we've, we've got three other stars, standard seven axis machines. So we thought, let's push the boat out, let's go up to the 11 axis just to take uh, full advantage of uh, reduced cycle times. And, and give us an example of, in fact, I'll pick this component up here. Let's have a look at that. If you could just hold that. This is an example of a part where you've seen significant savings on this machine compared to another star. Now, it wasn't slow before, no. but can you talk us through how fast it is now? Well, we've took it down from 1 minute 27 on one of our 7-axis SR32Js down to 62 seconds on the SW20, just basically down to the fact that we can balance turn and balance mill this component off complete. And how does the machine actually achieve that? Is it a, as a, a result, you've got three, what you class as three heads in here, haven't you? Yes, we have, One yeah. of which would normally be in a fixed position, yeah. mm -hmm. but it's got a multiple of axes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a head three over the back of the machine. We have tool positions 11 and 12 on head three, standard turning positions. They work with or independently with, from head one, but at the moment on this job, I'm using them to balance turn this diameter down from 20 mil to 8 mil to to get ready for the threading. Above those positions, we've got three live tooling positions, which I'm utilising position 14 and six on head head one for balance milling the component down as well. And above those, we've got the, the four standard uh, drilling arm tools, which you see on most slide head lays, which can work on head one and head two. So that's servicing. Uh the main spindle which we've looked at there Adam but but what about the back working is there any differences in capability there too well this machine's got double the capability of all our other star machines where they've only got four tools on the back but this has got eight and um, you, you, could, you access all the eight tools by using the uh, Y2 axis right okay so in all I mean when, when you look at this machine is it uh, we always talk about being application specific and that is important isn't it the part has to be right but where would you envisage that this machine best fits? Is it on volume work, or would you say it's quite good for smaller batch runs as well? And what, and what does the part need to look like in order to get a real, real benefit from this machine? I do think you have to throw a few features at the machine to get the full capability out of it. But where on the volume side, um, we don't produce massive volumes of components. I mean, this batch of parts is three and a half thousand, so that's fairly, fairly low for a, stand, a sliding head job. So I'd say up to 10,000, you know, you, you, it is worth going on this machine. So in summary then, when you look at this and you look at the part that you need or that would, you'd get the best out of this machine, it would have quite a lot of features on it and you, what you'd be trying to do is use as many tools or do as many operations at the same time. Is that really what we're, what we're saying here, Adam? It is a machine for that sort of purpose, yet as long as you can use a bit of balance turning, balance milling, or even use the superposition on the Z3 axis, so you can, um, you can drill on that axis whilst um, head one is uh, turning another diameter. That's, the, that's where this machine comes into itself. But where does the knowledge come from in order to be able to, to uh, create the component in the ways that you're talking? Is that from you, or does the, the STAR software help you do that as well? Initially, when you look at your drawing, then, and then you going from a seven-axis machine to an eleven-axis machine, you can you can sort of see features where I could make that on Z3 for nothing if I was grooving on using the grooving insert whilst it was turning. If I was rough finishing a, a diameter on Z3 whilst head one was roughing the, roughing the component out, it, it's horses for courses, on it, and you do get some uh, software off Star. We've got PU Program Utility Junior, which helps a lot because you've gone from two axis, uh, two channel program into three channel. Okay, so in all for you, this you took out a previous star machine because you wanted that additional uh, two axis here. Has it really paid dividends for you? Yes, it has. Yeah, uh, even on fairly simple components like that, the cost saving. I mean, 
for every three components I'm making on that, one of them is free. Wow. Brilliant way to summarise it. I was actually going to say that for the job that you're doing on here, uh, by doing it on this machine gives you an extra three days machining capacity um, a month, which is, you know, a big saving to be able to offer to your customers as well. And I can't fault the machine ever since we've had it. No problems at all. No servicing, no service services required from Star. It's, it's an absolute rock solid machine.